After three movies, we've finally figured out how to train dragons, how to grow up with them, and how to finally let them go. Yep, after multiple delays, How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World has finally arrived. Now that you've seen the movie, wipe away your tears to reveal all the hidden moments found within the movie and its epic release. Oh yeah, there's some major spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen The Hidden World yet, you've been warned. In the Hidden World, we get introduced to the Light Fury, a white-skinned female version of Night Fury. At first glance, the Light Fury looks like a clone of the Night Fury, just with a different color filled in. Well, this isn't all true. Along with different colored eyes and less ears, Light Fury's design and movements are based off some real animals. A lot of the inspiration for the Light Fury was based off of the Snow Leopard. The animal is found in many parts of Asia and is also elusive, much like the Night Fury. For the head shape and specific walking movements, additional inspiration was found through the odd look walking fish known as the axolotl. Through all the dragon movies, we hear dragons making random noises and growls. While the subtitles don't provide any clues, the animators know exactly what's going on. To help develop these sounds and movements, early drafts of the Hidden World script feature actual dialogue to represent the dragon noises. If How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World feels pretty familiar, then you're probably a huge Pokémon fan. The animated series featured the episode Bye Bye Butterfree, which features a lot of the same plot points and elements as The Hidden World. Ash spent a long time training and watching Butterfree grow. Butterfree meets a similar Butterfree, but one which has a pink color scheme. Team Rocket attempts to capture the female Butterfree so it can also trap Ash's version and kill them both. And then the episode ends on a bittersweet note when Butterfree is released into the wild to be with his true love. Sound familiar? In How to Train Your Dragon 2, the Bewilder Beast is one of the main antagonists, but quickly loses its control and power when Toothless reigns supreme as the Dragon Alpha. So what exactly happened to the creature? Well, you can spot him in the hidden world, hanging out among all the other dragons. Without Drago controlling him, the Bewilder Beast clearly gets along better with other dragons, and is able to live peacefully in this world and away from human life and influence. While a majority of the voice cast returned for The Hidden World, you may just hear one voice that sounds slightly off. Justin Ruppel voices the character of Tough Nut, replacing T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller was recast due to multiple reports and news about his behavior and abusive actions toward females. Pretty smart move considering the main demographic for the film is young children. And at the same time, this could be Justin Ruppel's big break in the voiceover world. Grimmel may serve as the big bad in the hidden world, but it wasn't always intended this way. Early drafts of the script feature Drago's return and ultimate showdown with Hiccup. You certainly are hard to get rid of. Despite getting pretty far into pre-production, the story never panned out, and Drago was dropped altogether. Would the film have been more effective with Drago, or felt like more of the same? Who knows? Nothing like trying to pick up a lady dragon, only to find out Hiccup has to play third wheel the whole time. Thanks to their unique rider and dragon relationship, Toothless was pretty grounded. But Hiccup came up with a solution to craft an automatic tail. If the small plot element felt familiar, well, it was actually done in the Dragon Holiday special Gift of the Night Fury. Only in that one, a potential soulmate wasn't on the line, and Toothless denied the new present. Astrid even mentions Hiccup's previous attempt, which was a nice callback to something besides the original trilogy, as they often ignore events in the various Dragon TV shows. While all three How to Train Your Dragon movies were developed and produced by DreamWorks Animation, each movie had the rare and unique situation of getting released by a different movie studio each time. The first was released by Paramount, the second was released by 20th Century Fox, and The Hidden World was released by Universal Pictures. This helps explain the huge delay of finally getting the movie into theaters. But everything paid off with a massive opening of over $55 million. One of the things that really makes the film stand out is the movie ditching a 3 and replacing it with the subtitle A Hidden World. This wasn't the first time the franchise was going to do this. The prequel, How to Train Your Dragon 2, was originally going to ditch the 2 and get replaced with The Secret of the Ice Cave. Maybe it was a good idea to just focus on the numbers instead of trying to set the record for the longest title of an animated movie. While you were wiping your tears away as you left the movie theater, you likely just strolled by some of the great art created for The Hidden World. Famed poster artist Drew Struzan is known for incredible painted posters on films like Star Wars The Force Awakens and the Indiana Jones franchise. He actually came out of retirement just to create three new posters for the movie. Each poster represents characters and scenes from each movie in the trilogy. We imagine all kinds of reprints will be made and sold to diehard dragon fans all over the world.
One of the more touching moments in the hidden world, and boy were there a lot, came when Toothless uses a stick to draw the Light Fury and bond with her. Did the scene look familiar? Well, it should because this is the exact same thing Hiccup did with Toothless in the first Dragon movie. Not only did Toothless use the same bonding tactic, but he actually remembered the moment so long afterwards. And Toothless actually got a lot better at drawing in the meantime. Astrid definitely knows where her loyalty lies with her friends and their dragons. While many assumed Hiccup would ride Toothless into the sunset while Astrid rides the new Light Fury, this was not the case. No matter where she was traveling, Astrid always stuck with her dragon Stormfly. We imagine it was pretty hard for her to let go of him just like it was for Hiccup to say goodbye to Toothless at the end of that movie. Without the ability to cruise on over to the local Walmart, Hiccup and his Burke villagers must get creative when it comes to creating and crafting various items. Just check out the scene where Hiccup makes the automatic tail for Toothless. The moment happens quick, but Hiccup is able to create a large portion of black paint by crushing some Toothless's scales and mixing them with his dragon saliva. Pretty crafty if you ask us. The whole movie focused on Hiccup's ability to let go of dragons and be able to defend his village without the help of dragons. You would think Grimmel would be stopped by Hiccup directly, but once again he relies on the help of the dragons to close this one out. Guess we just have to assume that between the time of Grimmel's defeat and Hiccup's full beard growth, he learned to become a Viking warrior on his own and without Toothless by his side. A majority of animated films are fast, breezy, and get to the point quickly so impatient children can make it through the whole sitting. Thankfully, DreamWorks gave the hidden world a little time to breathe as this film clocks in at 104 minutes, the longest runtime ever for a DreamWorks animated movie. Sure, it's no godfather when comparing length times, but anything over 90 minutes is really pushing it when it comes to animation. The extra time really allowed for some emotional moments, extended scenes, and great battles. Grimmel's main source of power is by using the venom of a Death Gripper dragon to put them to sleep. You think this venom would be a huge advantage to the Death Gripper, but it also turns out to be effective against them as well. Yep, if you pay attention in the movie, you will see Grimmel use the Death Gripper's own venom against them, effectively putting them to sleep and giving Grimmel full control. Hopefully these dragons can keep a handle on the Lakey Venom, or they may just put themselves to sleep mid-flight. A ton of promotional material for the Hidden World showcased Hiccup growing up and finally showing signs of a mighty beard. Well, for those excited about the digital facial hair, you had to wait practically the whole movie to see it. There was another Burke writer who did grow out his facial hair, and that was Fishlegs. Although it's hard to notice at first, a couple of shots clearly showcase how much his hair has grown between movies. Not only can Grimmel's venom cause a dragon to get pretty sleepy, but the same mysterious liquid also works as a way to mind control the dragons. So what's the explanation behind this? Well, just because. It certainly allows Grimmel the ultimate control, especially when he unleashes the Light Fury to woo Toothless back to him. The film showcases the mind control, but we have to wonder if the Death Gripper could also yield the same powers. Could the venom also dye his gray hair back to its natural color? There are endless possibilities with the magic venom, and we can see the infomercial already. The Hidden World in the Hidden World is a fantastical place, filled to the brim with dragons, possibly some black lights, and plenty of baby dragons flying around. When Night Fury arrives and follows Light Fury there, we realize how rare, special, and powerful the Night Fury is. Much like the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World, he is instantly recognized as the main alpha and immediately selected as their leader. We knew he could lead the dragons in Burke, but this is definitely a huge promotion for the little dragon that could. Voiced by Craig Ferguson, the character of Gobber has played an essential role in all of the How to Train Your Dragon films, but many people just know him as Gobber. Turns out the character's full name is Gobbler the Belch, and we have to wonder if Belch is passed down through various family members or if the name was based off a trait Gobber is known for in the dragon world. In How to Train Your Dragon 2, we get introduced to Hiccup's mother, who proves to be a great warrior and useful resource in Hiccup's adventures. One of Valka's trademark weapons is a large staff she carries around and is able to summon her dragon with. The staff itself is not filled with any type of magic, though. It actually has a whistle built into it that you can slightly hear every time she swings it around. Truly learning how to train her dragon, she relies on the whistle to summon it whenever she needs. Phew! There was a whole lot packed into the last five minutes of How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World. Astrid and Hiccup got married. Oh wait, Astrid and Hiccup had two kids! It wasn't hard to tell they were their offspring either. The nameless daughter had Hiccup's hair and Astrid's eyes, while the nameless boy had Hiccup's eyes and Astrid's hair. Talk about a perfectly blended family. 
While the Light Fury and the Night Fury seem to be the same species but with different colors, this is not the case. The two dragons are actually different species able to mix together and have hybrid baby dragons. You can see the various color tones and spots on the baby dragons during the closing moments of the movie. This type of mixed breeding is very similar to the Liger, which is a real-life mix of a female tiger and a male lion. In the original Dragon movie, Hiccup reads through the Book of Dragons to learn more about the Night Fury. Only, there is no entry on the creature. In the Hidden World, we find out the reason for this. Grimmel has killed every other Night Fury. But this opens up a lot of other questions. Mainly, how old was Grimmel? The Dragon book seems to have been passed down through multiple generations, and even Hiccup's dad knows nothing about the Night Fury. So Grimmel's hunting days must have been long, long before. Burke had to relocate their whole village and find a new place to call home. They could have been safe for years before Grimmel found them if it wasn't for Roughnut. Roughnut was captured by Grimmel and fell for the oldest trick in the book. She ventured right back to the Burke village, allowing Grimmel and his goons to follow her there. Just as we're getting over Star-Lord messing up the Avengers' plan against Thanos, we have to witness Roughnut cause all types of chaos in the Burke village. Wow, the hidden world sure did have a lot of hidden moments. What was your favorite part of the movie? Was it the best way to cap off the trilogy? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content.